I'm John Graft, and I love Chicago real estate. Between showings, I stop in my favorite places, talk with local business owners, and bring their story to you. This is my Chicago. I found this spot in last year, end of July, I think. I got it August, and it took me like three and a half months. Mm -hmm. I remember because there was a coffee shop here beforehand. Yeah, right? but it was already out of business when I found it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long were they open for? I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea. I think they were pretty like a couple of years, maybe. Sounds right. Like two years. Yeah. It's a good corner. You know, with Dom's corner. across the street, that's great. I killed my business for like one of the first open for like a week and a half. Because everyone was going there? I mean, even I went there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then kind of they came back to normal here. So it was like, you know, if someone wants a place to sit, maybe they go get some food over there. If they come here and get a coffee, right? Because they have so much seating over there. I, I don't know. I'm too European when it comes to coffee. My way of thinking. I, I, people prefer to go to the grocery store to buy coffee. Like it's beyond me. There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> That's not your audience. No, like me, like as a Greek, like both my friends in Greece grew up. Like we never go to the grocery store to buy coffee. We never yeah. do that. Like my parents would go grocery shopping mm -hmm. because my father's too lazy to walk around with my mom. We'll sit down and have some coffee. Okay. So, you have Greek coffee here? You no, guys make it? it's too much work. It is, yeah. It is. I, I can make it, I can make it a steamer, but it won't be nice. It won't be good. Yeah. It is too much work. Yeah. I like that grit. It's amazing coffee, but it's yeah. too much work. It does not well, work. You're up for a day. <laughs> <laughs> and you're... And you can feel it. I like tried greetings. frappe. Uh, they made me put frappe. Have you tried it? No. That's Greek instant coffee. How is that possible? How can you have gr instant coffee that's Greek? Doesn't sound right. That's how they make it. It's iced coffee. Like, uh, I didn't. Yeah. I tied it on for like a month to get off. Even people were asking me. They were ordering. I was like, please don't take it. It's the worst coffee ever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. They have in Japan. They have uh, instant green tea. Okay. It's okay, but it's it's not green tea. Oh. It's a powder you mix in. It's not the same. Greek coffee is nice to make it at home in the morning and enjoy it. Make yeah. a big cup of it. You have to sit. Yeah. Really enjoy it. And the problem with good coffee, have you seen how they made it? How they make it? Uh, with, I know. I know the they have that thing with the handle. Up, yeah. But how do they? Yeah. How do they? How do they make if it? If you don't pay attention when it comes up, like and it spills all over the place, stinks. It stinks. The whole shop will stink. Okay. So when you make a good coffee, you gotta be like that over there, like. Like watching it the whole yeah. time? How long does it take to make it? I don't know, like two, three minutes. Two, three minutes? Yeah. Okay. And what do you, what's different about it? Are you putting a lot more coffee into it? I think there's a roast. It's different too. How the Roasters. grind is different, yeah. And you it's boil th it. It's thinner, isn't it? It's actually, or it's Turkish thicker? coffee. Yeah. It's the same thing, but in Greece we call it Greek coffee. It's exactly the you same thing. You can still get it. I get it every once in a while on Wells. Uh, it's an old old Turkish family that's there. Or old Greek family. Or old oh. Jerusalem. It's old Jerusalem. That's the okay. name of the place. Yeah, I don't know. One coffee shop I used to work in Greece when I was like 70 years old. Like they had the original, like you're supposed to make it in sand. Uh -huh. It's a box with sand. Yeah, metal box with sand. It has like fire underneath it. Interesting. And you put the whole thing inside the sand. Oh, so the sand is heating it up? Yeah. Okay. That's supposed to be like the, the original way. way to do it, yeah. But sometimes I wouldn't pay attention. We'll spill on the sand the whole coffee shop will stink. Burn <laughs> <laughs> <Where the> coffee. <laughs> How long have you been in Chicago? Nine years. 2012, like in September. It's gonna be nine years next month. What brought you? I don't know. I was born here. You're born here. Okay. I was grew up in Greece. I don't know. Girl, my sister moved here like three months before I did. I broke up with my girl. We broke up with my girlfriend down in Greece. I was like, oh, fuck it, I'm leaving. Okay. <laughs> so I kind of came so to Chicago. Like, moved back. Yeah. Had you been here beforehand? Other than I mean, I've been born here on here. vacation. Like I visited like three times before that. Okay. I don't know. It wasn't planned. I just came here, like, I thought everybody was rich here. I think we're going to make billions in one day. Uh -huh. And I came here, and I was like, what the? I started working and working and working and working. I was like, what the heck? There's no money here. <laughs> you know, there's there, no free money. <laughs> there's, no, there's not as much money here as there are on the coast. So people talk about real estate all the time. You know, like, the most expensive place you'll see there's here. There's opportunities like, here, but you have to work. In Greece, there's no jobs. That's a, the that's a difference. Okay. Here, if you have a goal, you can reach that goal by if you work hard and you're smart. I think in so Greece, too. you don't. You just cannot. Like, you're just going to find a job and you're going to be flat. Just no opportunities. Yeah, nothing. What made you want to open this? I don't know. 
I've been working a lot of coffee shops in Greece like all my life and I kind of liked it. I came here working in a restaurant and I didn't like the too much like for me. I realized like this is easier mm -hmm. to run a place like that. Than a restaurant? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So many fewer lesser pieces, moving pieces, right? Yeah, and then when I was looking like what what I want to do and how to do it, then I was talking to my friends in Greece because there were coffee shops over there. So I realized at some point that I have a good team mm -hmm. to help me. And we did this. The inside looks great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I like the monkeys. It's different. Yeah, it's different. It's cool. How did you find all this stuff? My friend designed it. Yeah? Remotely from Greece, everything. From Greece? Uh-huh. Oh, no kidding. So he found the monkeys and all these things? And everything. And sent them here? No, he was telling me like wallpaper, send me links from places in the United States that sell wallpapers. I was sending him, he was picking what, which one, he was sending what to buy, I was ordering here, coming here, putting on. So he did everything from there. And so did you just work with the contractors and give them the materials yeah. and everything? Yeah. Yep. Every little thing, like some, like, like that cabinet over there, it's got it. I like the cabinet. It's from Australia. Yeah. <laughs> he found it? He found it. <laughs> we have some like, like the light, Pictures of both the bar they're from England. Okay, those are cool too. It's yeah. very it's very mid century. It, it feels good. The furniture is well spaced too. You have all the seatings you can actually sit in. Do you spray paint these gold? Yeah, yeah. We couldn't find them. I don't yeah. think she wanted. No them. one's gonna it notice. Crazy. It fits. It works. How'd you find this location? Online. Yeah. I was looking. I was just looking for something to do in my life. I wanted to open something. Uh huh. And I found this. I came and saw it. I was like. But I thought last July, like in three months, by the time I opened, like COVID would be done. Yeah. <laughs> and here we are. Yep. With a variant. Yep. How do you choose the but drinks and things like that? Huh? How do you choose the drinks and what to serve? The basic ones, I knew them from Greece. Mm -hmm. And then I came here. I didn't know about all the milk substitutes yeah. that people are doing now. So I kind of like. The old milk, I know, I could taste it immediately. Yeah, they told me I have to have those things. Uh, matcha latte, like I didn't know. Mm -hmm. The girls seem nice, the staff. Yeah, they're good, thank you. How hard is it to hire people? Here? Yeah. Every day they come out and play for a job. Really? Yeah. Everyone's complaining about how hard it is to find a job right now, or how, how hard it is to find people for the jobs. Everyone I know that has a restaurant. You're getting applications every day? I don't know, day? they tell me the same thing too, but I don't know, here it's mostly the college kids that like the coffee shop and they want to work here. They want a less hectic environment, probably. Because the restaurants. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. Like they just come in. I was like, oh, I like the monkeys. I, I wish I worked here. Kind of you're hiring. Okay. That's it. That's how they come. I've never had a problem. Like since I opened, I'm gonna be like, I always someone was asking for a job. So people just walked in. Yeah. You didn't have to put anything online. No. <laughs> <laughs> I even get randomly emails like, are you guys hiring by any chance? I was there the other day for coffee, and would really like to love to work there. Uh -huh. They don't even know how. Maybe I'm the worst boss ever. They don't know. Just like the caption would like to work. Interesting. Here. Yeah. How'd you pick the name? I didn't. The designer, my f the designer who did everything inside, he was working with his friend from Greece that he was a graphic designer. He did the logos and they came out with a name. Okay. And uh, I had in my mind a different name when I told him I was like, no. But those two guys, like, they're doing coffee shops in Greece, so they knew what they were doing. Yeah. Deco so is cool. It's a good name. They started like the main idea to be Art Deco. Yeah. And then they came out with the name Cafe Deco with a C. Mm -hmm. And a couple of days later, the other guy told him like, let's switch the C with a K to make people ask like, why? Yeah. And it works. Actually, oh, that's People smart. do ask me, what does it mean? Some people ask me if it's my last name or something. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So it starts a conversation with the patrons. Yeah, something. With your customers what and builds a relationship why? doing that. Yeah. I know that guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What were you doing before this? I was managing a restaurant. And what was that the like? the suburbs. Stressful? Yeah. No, it wasn't. It was okay. It was too much, too many hours. But it was okay. I learned a lot of things, mm -hmm. especially like moving here. What were you able to learn there and bring here? How the whole system works was different from Greece. Like payroll, like hours, orders, every little thing. Like I got all my certificates there, like that I needed to do this job. I learned a lot of things. How was it working with the city? Get your licenses. It was very easy last year, even yeah. with COVID, yeah. Like that, I didn't have like no delays, nothing. I would expect the opposite. I, me too, nothing. Mm -hmm. Some things I had to remote it because it wouldn't allow people to go in and stuff like that. Like that, I didn't, nothing was delayed. Mm -hmm. Maybe I was just lucky, especially with the license. A lot of people told me, like, oh, it's going to take months and stuff like that. Nothing, right on time. How long did it take? 
I don't remember because I had to get my Chicago manager certificate. I took that. And then a couple of weeks, the rest of the day was here. Like the health department, I was freaking out. But when I called them that I'm ready to come to the inspection, they were here like, like about five days later. Really? Yeah. Okay. Maybe I was just lucky. I don't know. I have no problems at all. Did the guys in Greece set this up or like teach you enough so the inspections were easier? Were they part of that process too? No, no, we didn't do nothing. Know nothing about that. So I had. So it just passed. The guy I bought the equipment from. He works the company. Like he sets up kitchens for restaurants. So he knew. So he told me like. Okay. The bar put a little bit closer, not too close to the door. There are things like that. Okay. So he kind of guided me with those things. But I know that I know some things that were like Greek height that it was different here. But it's okay. Like what? Like the bar. Like some people tell me it's too, too tall. It's not too tall. No, you want to be able to put your hands For on it. For me, it's fine. I don't yeah. <laughs> like the guy in Greece, the designer told me to put bar stools over there, but he told me, no, nobody sits at the bar no in the coffee shop. There. You see, that's yeah. different. In Greece, everybody sits. Everywhere in Europe, right? Yeah. You're sitting at the bar, yeah. and you have this little food. Do you have any food here? I uh, Just pastries. I saw the cake. Yeah, and some bagels and muffins. You get those from a third party vendor? Alliance Bakery. Okay. Where's that at? It's on Division. Okay. Very good, actually. Was it hard to open this? Like for you, mentally, physically? It was scary, man. I've never opened a business before in my life. Okay. But I got a lot of support from my friends in Greece. Like, it sounds did. like it. It they sounds did. like a lot of help. They did. Like, no, they, were, they pushed me. Like, they were like, don't do it. I mean, you have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. I have no keys or nothing. They just do it. <laughs> How much time are you devoting to this? The beginning a lot. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, Rita, the girl that just left here, she's been with me since December. I can tell she knows how this place runs, right? Everything. Yeah. Everything. I can see and it. that was the hard part from my side, the beginning. Like I had to to start trusting her that she can do it. Yeah. And she could, but it was me. Like I was like, if I leave the cup shop for a day, like something's gonna happen, something's gonna happen. And it took at some point I got like, was burned out, so I'm like whatever it is, just let here and whatever happens. And she she did fine, so it was me mentally. I, I wasn't prepared to leave this this place by itself. Now I'm just fine. I, I take off every time I want. I imagine it's like parents with kids leaving their kids with a babysitter first time, yeah, for the first yeah, time, was the right? First time. I was home and I was freaking out. You don't want to let go. I was freaking out. Were you watching I was cameras home. the whole no, time? No, I don't. I told. I promised her like uh, that. I don't want to do that. Okay. I don't think uh, that it, I trust I don't think her. It, that it doesn't I don't want to. It doesn't do give you anything. I, I work in a restaurant with cameras, and it's. it's it's stressful when you work and you know like the owner is watching like every five yeah. minutes. It is stressful. I was so. talking to someone who works at a restaurant. His the owner calling him, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Yeah, no, I don't. From a distance. No, the, no, And no. the cameras are so high definition. They can see everything. They can zoom in. No, I don't. I, I promise you that I won't do it and I don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. I think that makes them feel kind of more comfortable too. When you're opening it, the hardest parts, is scary. What was scary about it? I mean, the failure, the process? I don't know. I had a feeling that it would do good. Mm -hmm. And that helped me. Like, I had a feeling that I would, this place would do great. I don't know why. I saw that because I found this place last year in July and I saw it. So there was a lot of people. I saw young people. Out, and I kind of had a feeling that I know what I'm doing. It's a busy corner. It is Location's a busy corner. Great. It is a busy corner. And... Uh, then came together with Costa, my friend from Greece, and I saw the places that he has done in Athens, and I was like, okay, then I had a, we're gonna do something special here. Scary, the scariest part was I, I had no money when I opened, absolutely nothing, like I was, nothing. I spent everything. Okay. I opened October 14th, November 14th, sorry, and I didn't even have money to pay my rent from the apartment for December, let's say. So you're sleeping behind there? Or no? no, I mean, I, <laughs> whatever I made those 16 days, like I had to pay like the rent, my rent, this rent here. So I, I was completely broke when I opened it, the first day I opened. Did you have people coming in immediately? I opened, I didn't say nothing. I didn't advertise nothing. We just opened the door like on Thursday morning. I mean, there were people coming in, like they saw the lights. People but it was, like, it was like, it was cold. The weather didn't help. But it's amazing. The neighbors here, they did support me. They did come and they bought coffee. Even people that don't even drink coffee just support me That's without good. even knowing me. Like, they just came to this place because it's a new place, I guess, and they just wanted to come. People love new things, and I think your decor is a very inviting environment. You come in, you, you forget you're in Chicago when you walk in this room. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's how it feels. And the exposed brick works really well. 
All the wallpaper looks that good. That was the only thing we didn't change. Yeah. It works really well. Way, yeah. That was the only thing like the lander told me like how stay the way it is. And then when I called my friend and told him this and that happened, was like, yeah, we're not touching that. That's yeah. the only thing that's worth staying. So. Well, I can tell the landlord has worked to make it look the way it does. Because it's hard to make exposed brick look perfect. Yeah. This looks really good. You got to scrape it, seal it, take it down and make it look the right way. Yeah. How many? We had a lot of people for the first like three, four, four. Even now, like, like people coming up and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. It's different. Can we take pictures? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> well, here, go ahead. What's your busiest time of day? Time, uh, we have two peaks actually. One is in the morning, like eight to nine. Mm -hmm. And then we get a late rush again, like two o'clock. About four? Two. I don't drink caffeine until about three. You don't? No, no. I, I get enough sleep. You don't drink in the morning? No. If you don't drink it, you don't need it. No, I know it's all here. It's all here. Yeah. yeah. And I used to. And then I stopped because I was, I woke up one morning and I just automatically, I got plenty of sleep. I was rested. I was good. And I just went straight to the pot, started pouring it. I'm like, whoa, hold on. What am I doing? And I drink tea for the most part. Yeah. And I was like, so what am I, what am I even doing? I don't need to do this. So I stopped. Yeah, Three o'clock, it gives me that extra push. So this was nice. Be before the interviews, I like to have a little caffeine too. It gives me a little perk. This, I don't know. I just had one sip when we first got it here and I just, I never you don't like it? it? No. No? What are you drinking? Black ice. Prefer the espresso. That's one of our specialty coffees. It's a great coffee, iced. Okay. How many customers do you need in here a day? Do I need? Yeah. To pay my bills? Yeah. I don't know. I don't have no idea actually right now because I don't know how many <laughs> my bills are because I'm paying credit cards too and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. Whatever I make, I just give it. I'm not making it all money. Goes away. I'm not making any money yet. Yeah. How long until? Another year, is it? Say it again? Another year. Another year. Yeah. Okay. Are you, so you're paying yourself a salary too? Yeah. Okay. I have to. A modest salary. Yeah. yeah something like something <laughs> to pay the rent. Whatever's extra. Like yeah. <laughs> Are you living in the suburbs then? I'm moving in two weeks, like four minutes from here. I found an apartment. Perfect. I just found the lease yesterday. Really nice. Yeah. You uh, have to be close to the business. Close, but not too close. Yeah. You don't want to be up top. You got to have an excuse when they call you, like, that you have to be here. Like, okay, I got to not that close yeah yeah don't tell anyone where you moved i'm in nearby <laughs> i'm in lincoln park that's good enough i'm in lakeview yeah yeah how do you choose the vendors the brands the vendor i knew him from the previous car uh, the restaurant i was working like we buying car from him and i knew he had good good okay. coffee i see i see metropolis right no or, metropolis is from the movie it's a movie yeah it's not the coffee no <laughs> <laughs> so what do you serve for coffee i got the philosophy blend that's so I've never heard of this company. How did you decide on this company? Because I went there, I saw their plan, and I really like it. And I, and I know where they buy the coffee from. The quality is good. And Where's this blend plant? is very nice. Yeah, they roaster. Where the, where's it made? Uh, Forest Park. Forest Park? This blend, I think, is a Guacama Guatemala, Colombia, Brazil, and Sumatra. And I see a bourbon. The variety is bourbon. Yeah. What do you like about this? It tastes like coffee. It's very smooth. Yeah, yeah it doesn't have like any flavors on it. Like, it doesn't taste like lavender or anything. I know what you mean. It's kind of coffee. What about Because I love, I, love, I love pure coffee. I don't like flavors. I don't like, it's just like the taste of coffee. The coffee should be just the way it's yeah. supposed to be. Even the, like, I like matcha. You do the, the latte, it's good. But sometimes just pure anything is the right way to yeah. go. If I'm drinking coffee, it's pure black. Yeah. yeah. I'm also doing a single origin coffee. So now, right now I have Ethiopian, place? yeah. Okay. For this month, for August. Why is that better? Give customers an option, try something different. Okay. So every month we're gonna switch it. Is single origin a, a marketing part, or like why is single origin important? Because this has what? It has four four different places. Yeah. So why not do something like People that? People try something different, mm -hmm. just to get an idea how it tastes. Usually, doesn't mean it's gonna taste better than my, than the house blend, but it's nice to try something else. I have also single origin from <coughs> Mexico, single origin from uh, Costa Rica. So I'm going to switch like each month, have something different. You ever have Hawaiian? Like a Kona coffee? We'll get there too. It's good. It's yeah. good. So it tastes totally different than anything else. We'll try it. It's good. So you have this brand. How do you choose some of the others? I'm getting this for espresso. I got the same company. I'm doing medium light for the house, the drip coffee. And same with doing dark roast for cold brew. Okay. How'd you choose the pastries? 
the beginning all over the place. I was getting, I was driving like pastures here and there. I was buying stuff by myself. Yeah, I had to see what sells and what doesn't sell. And then we ended up with Alliance because they have very good stuff and they deliver too. Interesting. But the, like the pound cake, I get it from a bakery out at, uh, outside Chicago. Not just the pound cake. I have to pick it up. Like. So when you move, that's over. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm still going to go buy it. People love it. You're going to go to the suburbs? I mean, it's like 20 minutes from here. That's okay. Okay. So just outside. Yeah. City. When you were setting all this up, anything that would keep you up at night? I realized from customers that come here, the difference with this place for here, it's different. Everybody says that. It is. It's different than any other coffee shop yeah. I've seen. It reminds me more of a bar than a coffee shop. Yeah. In a good way. You know, like like a play, like a someone's trying a new theme, trying to do something different. Two weeks, I have the first day. They're doing a wedding shower here in the afternoon. Oh yeah, yeah. They rented the place. I got a lot of people that want nice. to rent it. When people are coming, are they usually buying and staying, or are they buying and going? Uh, Fifty-fifty. Yeah. No, actually, more are buying and going. Okay. How do you choose the prices? I price match everything around here. Okay. I didn't want to go too crazy. It's got to be hard because a cup of coffee. I don't. It's what three? What's your cheapest cup of coffee? Four bucks. Two seventy. Two fifty house coffee. Two fifty. So that's out the door with tax. Probably about three dollars. Two seventy five. Yeah, seventy six. So that's pretty good. How about the lattes and things like that? Where do they start on price? I don't know, like four or four fifty. Four fifty. So that's average size, pricing. and then depends what kind of milk you're gonna use. Mm -hmm. Depends if you put any flavor in it, any syrup and stuff like that. You want to, people need to be invested in your business. And if you're serving good food, and if you're doing well in the area, then people are going to want to come here and they're going to want to patron you and they, they want to keep you in the community. I think that's one thing we all learned through COVID is you know, some of your favorite places close and you're like, well, maybe I wasn't going there enough. Like, I'm, well, the, I'm the asshole it, customer, it, right? I, I have regulars. Now I have a lot of regulars from here and it's nice. Like, they, I know them by name. They know me by name. Like, I wish I had a place like this in my neighborhood. Feels nice. It feels nice like when I walk to Walgreens and I see people out. Hey, George, yeah. how are you? Hey. <laughs> That's good, right? Yeah. And now you'll be living here, so be more of the yeah. part of the community. Less commute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like it. But the people are amazing. They're so amazing here. I don't know if it's the... I think it's the demographics of this area. I don't know if it's the coffee shop or together, but the people, the customers here are like so nice. Mm -hmm. They're so nice. Even the girls that work here, they're amazed about that. Like because it makes our job easier too. People yeah. come in and they're like in a good mood and they're smiling. I've never seen that. No, the restaurants, bars, coffee shops I work my life. I think there's a lot of money in this neighborhood. You know, people are generally doing well. They have good jobs. They're going to good schools. They feel good about spending people are their nice. money. Yeah. So they have let. It's not that they have fewer problems, but they're happier because they have less to worry about. I maybe I hope. I don't know. Maybe you're right. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. It's, or maybe it's you're amazing. just doing a good job. We never had like somebody like complaining or yelling or anything. All, they're all so nice when they come in and they're smiling and they make you smile. Too, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, when people are nice to you, it's hard to be mean to other yeah. people. If you're having a good day, you usually push that day forward onto yeah. others. Then I was surprised. Like the, the best reward for me was like after I opened was like my reviews online. Like I was, I was doing was great. That? My reviews. Your what? Reviews. Your reviews. Yeah. yeah. How many reviews do you have? I don't know. Like on Google, I have like seventy something. I have four point yeah. nine stars. Yeah. Out of five, I'm like that's nice. It feels nice. <laughs> you know? like, it's like, <laughs> I did something right, or, <laughs> or I'm doing. We're doing something right. Just it's just, just not me here. It's the girls too. Like it, we're a team here. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have done it by myself. And zero advertising. Still zero. Nothing. Do people ask you all the time for advertising? Yeah. Yeah. How do they do it? What they do they just come in here. What do they, they try and sell? I have no idea. I just tell them sorry. No, I wouldn't. The good thing about this shop by being different, uh, and we found out after we opened, it's like uh, after we didn't have to advertise. Mm -hmm. It was advertising itself. I mean, you're paying you're, whatever your rent is. You're paying for that being on the corner. Yeah, I saw that yeah. when I was when we, before I signed the lease. I mean, we saw how the rents go. Like, well, it goes like that. The rents, and once you you hit the corner, it goes like that. Yes. <laughs> you have to spend less on advertising and other things. I'd rather pay for the rent then pay for the marketing, I think. Because the marketing yeah. is, is this woman walking by. She wants a cup of coffee, she's gonna stop in here. I was at whatever this place was beforehand, I stopped in here before, because it was right on the corner. Yeah. I wanted a coffee, okay, it's right here. Bam, jump, I'm out. Yeah, I don't know, think, I don't know if it's the monkeys or whatever it's here, <laughs> like, it's advertised because the, the, at some point it was like eight out of 10 customers were coming in, younger 
mm -hmm. generation of the younger people. Like they were taking pictures and were like posting yeah. things. We didn't have to do nothing there. Instagram, TikTok was TikTok was crazy at some point, and we, we didn't do nothing here. So you had people posing with all the things, yeah. putting it on social media, and then it going out. Do you yeah. see it on TikTok? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have TikTok, but Rita does it. Does that? Yeah. Uh huh. So we, we do absolutely nothing. Like we just post. That's good. It's organic and natural. Like, yeah. To advertise itself. That's good. That's very easy. It makes that easier for us. What do you think whatever. the demographics mix is? Like 40 and under and 40 and older? I get everything here. Uh -huh. I do have everything. But what's, what's heavier? I think younger. Younger? Yeah, 20. They're in the 20s. You're just close enough to DePaul here. And then you have Wrigleyville and Lakeview. I'm kind of weird with DePaul because it's close enough, but it's not walking, walking distance. Like it's not. It's close enough. If they're in this neighborhood, they might come here. Yeah. And if they want to be a little off campus, then they might live around here. And what's nice about diversity is it divides Lincoln Park and Lakeview. So you have a lot of people yeah, right that, on the border. Yeah. yeah. And you have, you have a lot of people that live two blocks this way, two blocks that way, because they want to be close to one or the other. Yeah. But still live in one. I mean, I have customers that they're going to drive here. That was actually my goal, like to that's, make that's this hard. place a destination. A destination? Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to make it convenient. Didn't want to make it convenient. No, I don't want to be. I don't be, want to be a convenient coffee shop. I don't want to. I want to be like a destination here. I want to. That makes sense. That's interesting. I would never think that, but when you just said it, yeah, I get what you're saying. That's my goal here. I work. You want people to want to come here. Yeah. Make an effort to come here. I want quality over convenience. Yeah. I, just, I don't want people to say oh, I got cafe deco coffee because it was convenient. I want people to say like I want cafe deco because I only go there because yeah. I like the coffee because I like the decor or because I, I don't know whatever. Who else sells this coffee in Chicago? Uh, then nobody, no one else. No one else? No. Yeah, I've never seen it. Yeah. Now I wish I got the coffee. Uh, <laughs> maybe next time you can get you one. You can buy that coffee from the company. I bet, that's how it looks, yeah. right? What's coffee cost for, like, what is this, two pounds? I, I, retail, retail. <laughs> I don't know how much retail. Do you, sell, retail. do you sell this too? Can people? I got the... This back, the black bags over the there. Black bag? one, what are those costs? Uh, $14, $14, I think. $14? How many cups of coffee does that make? Depends how you grind it. and. Okay. Uh, to be honest, I don't know how many cups you can make out of that. Because I don't know how you're going to do it, like drip coffee or espresso, depends. Let's say it's drip. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. That's okay. Probably gonna make like 20 pots easily. That sounds about right. Yeah. Do you get more tea? A lot of people order tea? Uh, no. They do, but no, it's mostly coffee. And what type of coffee? Is it black, lattes, cappuccinos, latte. espressos? Latte here. A lot of lattes? Oh my God, number one in sales. Most popular coffee. Interesting. That's your number one item? Yep. It's just a latte? Yeah, by far. Number one. Ice latte. Hey, no hot latte, depends on the weather. But I sell a lot of cappuccinos and I like that. That shows a lot about my customers, people that come here, in my opinion. The cappuccino? Cappuccino, yeah. For me, cappuccino is like the holy grail of coffees. Really? Yeah. It, why? <laughs> I don't know. It's the first they made. I don't know. It's hard to froth the milk. Yeah. You gotta know how to froth the milk. That's how you can tell the difference, like barista to barista. Like. What's the difference between a cappuccino and a latte? It's more foam than a cappuccino. Is that, that's it though, yeah. right? Okay. The foam's hard to get right. Yeah. To get it right, yeah. yeah. And right. then when you're, if you're taking that to go, you can't even really appreciate it because you have a lid. I feel like you have to sit down with a cappuccino. Uh, yeah, but still, I mean, yeah. Can't tell like the texture how it feels like. It's too like foamy. Uh, on your lips, it's too bubbly. You're drinking you know, it. It's, yeah, yeah. You can feel that bubble. Yeah, it hits your lips. It, it hits your lips. It's not supposed to have bubbles. But it's uh. It's gotta be like silk, like silk on top, like silk? smooth. Yeah. In Greek culture, is when do you start drinking coffee? Six years old. Young. Uh, it's a big part of our culture in Greece, coffee. To socialize more. In, that's the difference from here, I realize. Still, a lot of people come to work, coffee shops. In Greece, it's like they come to socialize. So you meet your friends, yeah. hang out at the coffee shop. Yeah, let's go for coffee. And people are doing that all the time. Yeah, all the time. I lived in Spain for a little bit. It's the same thing. Same thing, yeah. Yeah. Either you're doing it in the midday to break up the day, or at the end of the day, people are coming, this is where they're hanging out. Yeah, it's different than here. But I see like a lot of people like drinking coffee. A lot of people are going to local coffee shops, and that's good here. 
you been to Collectivo up on Clark? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That place is cool. Yeah. The Starbucks is across the street. And I think the Starbucks is going to die. No one goes there. That's what my brother is here from Greece now. He's visiting for two weeks. And I asked him about the house Starbucks in Greece. We're like, mm, they're dead. So like, just yeah. kids go there. Like, maybe. Yeah. Because you see that Collectivo opened up across the street and they're packed. All the time they're packed. They have that outdoor seating, all that stuff. That's Starbucks. good for them. It's good That's for them. I agree. a lot of things. Because when I found this spot, I called another friend in Greece. He owns, he owns two coffee shops in Athens right now. And I told him, like, I found a spot. I told him, but I don't know. I told him, there's a Starbucks walking distance this way. There's another Starbucks walking distance. And thank you, Donuts, across the street. And he told me, that's where you go, he said, to open a coffee shop. Yeah, I agree. Because <laughs> I don't think Starbucks is your competition. Because I wouldn't go into the Starbucks. He said, there's a reason why they're there. That means there's people there. Yeah. And that's where you go, he said. You go and there and you make a better coffee shop. You make it better. Because yeah. if you see a Starbucks and you see a, a local coffee shop, you're like, okay. Because you might go to the Starbucks. But then you, see the, people, you might see the local spot and then... There's a lot of people that they won't, they won't only go to Starbucks, but yeah. there's a lot of people that they won't go to Starbucks. But I think they those will. people are thinning. Fewer and fewer I people. I hope so. I think so. I hope so. Because it's not, it's not what it once was. I have customers here that told me that they stopped going to Starbucks and they start coming here because they like it here that we call them by their names. Yeah. Some people love that. And when they open the door and they say, hey, Paul, how are you? They just, I don't know, like they like that. Yeah. This is a way cooler environment. Starbucks might have more food. All that food's frozen anyway. It's not great. I don't know. I think I I had Starbucks maybe one time in my life. Really? Yeah. Yeah? I think the coffee's burnt. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know how to order at Starbucks. You know what they really have that's good, though? They have these little egg bites. If you're going to try any food there, try those egg bites. Yeah. They're good. I have no idea. I've never been to Starbucks. <laughs> I think people like shopping local, and the name thing makes a lot of sense. And you have a way cooler place, so people are going to want to be here more. They're yeah. going to want to be in a Starbucks. In a Starbucks, you know, there's always homeless people in there too. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but I see a lot of coffee shops here, a lot of local coffee shops. That's cool. That's good. That's going to change people's like way of thinking about coffee too. Do you connect with other coffee shop owners that aren't in your neighborhood? Nope. You should. That are no. I get the Elevate Cafe up the street. Uh -huh. Nikki comes here. I met the owner. I go there sometimes. She's nice. Uh, the couple that they own uh, Urban Alchemy, yeah, the university. When I first opened, they came here to introduce themselves. When I saw house. your address, I thought that this was that. Okay. I was just confused <laughs> because I've always saw that on the yeah, corner, yeah. and I know you were on the corner. Oh, have, yeah. have you gone over there and tried yeah, the coffee? Been there Looks like a cool place yeah, too. Yeah, it's nice. And it's nice too because they're just far enough where I don't think you're. Competitors. No, I don't think so. I would really care. In the city, no one wants to go more than two blocks for anything. This is kind of a nice area about this area because there's a lot of traffic here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of food traffic here. And you also have like, this residential behind here. Yes. So there's a lot of apartments and houses. So you have people like, you know, it's just going to... And I think people are going to notice your place too if Dom's opened up right across the street. Yeah. Because people are driving there. Maybe people that wouldn't have seen this otherwise will see it because they're driving to yeah. Dom's and they park and they see it and they stop in and say hi. I hope so. I think so. I hope so. I got other people getting coffee from here and going to their grocery shopping. I could see that. <laughs> well, I bet you have better coffee. I don't know. I, don't know. I, didn't, I haven't tried it. Not yet? No. Aren't you curious? I am, uh, but I know even if I try it, like, I'm going to, I won't like it because in my head, like, it's like, <laughs> you can't be objective. Street. Yeah, so I'm like. <laughs> my wife cooks, and when I'm testing the food, I have to do it with my eyes closed. I can't, I can't even see it. I can't have any idea to know what's hers, what isn't, or what's the one. Because if I just see it, I already think that one's better because of the color, the texture. There's something just about looking. Yeah. So I can't see it at all. I've got to close my eyes because our mind, our cognitive dissonance is bad. Our minds mess with us. <laughs> so I don't know if it helps. I don't know if it takes business. We're doing here good, so I'm okay. Like, I wasn't expecting, I never expected like to... I don't know, to make millions out of here. I just want a nice place. I just, I, it's comfortable, it's easy. The girls that work here like working here. The customers that come here like to be here, and that's what matters. How did you pick the two girls? The, actually, really, this is here since December. Back in the day, when I first opened with the pandemic, it was just me. My mm -hmm. sister helped me for a week, and then she was coming weekends. My cousin was here because I didn't know how much money I'm going to make. I didn't know if I have money to pay them. Yeah. And once I saw, like, I heard Rita. It was just me and her and my sister in the weekends. But I used to open by myself in the morning, stay by myself until 11 o'clock, and then bring Rita in with me. I was here seven days a week in the beginning, for like four and a half months. It burn you out. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I got to the point that like, it wasn't good for the coffee shop, too, because the people, customers were telling me, like, you look tired. 
No, you never want to hear that. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah, when customers say, you look tired, I mean, it doesn't look good. Like, for <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe you need a cup of coffee. How much coffee are you going to drink? <laughs> How much coffee do you drink in a day? Uh, the regular are three in the morning, and then I switch decaf. Okay. Just to drink some. Yeah, I don't drink that much coffee. Like, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> the jitters? That's real sometimes. Have you had uh, Phil's coffee? No. You should try that. It's like, it takes forever to get a cup of coffee, but they do every cup by hand, and it's, it is more caffeine than I've ever had to drink in my life. Oh, yeah? It is, it's something else. It feels different. You feel like you're on drugs. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I don't know. But it's good. It tastes real good. I'll be honest, when I open this place, I said, like, I'm going to open with whatever I know from Greece. Yeah. What's smart? You should never compare. In real estate, for what I do, there's lots of people that do lots of things. And I purposely do not watch what they do. Because if I, do, then, it, then it bleeds in, it poisons your ideas. Yeah. And you want to have it thorough and fresh and clean. And that's, I think that's real smart. And that's why your place looks this way, because yeah. you got outside ideas. If you had a Chicago person come in here, they'd give you Chicago ideas. And what works in Chicago has already worked in Chicago. It doesn't mean it's going to work again. Yeah. I think it was really smart to have an outside perspective because the colors are, are really, I really like this space. You're looking at all the photos online, they're like, cool, it's going to be fun to see. Nice. What is affogato? Ice cream. With the shadow of is that Greek? Double, no. What? I don't even know where it is from. Itali Italian. It must Italian, be Italian. Bro. Yeah. We had a couple of months ago honey lavender latte. That still sells like crazy. Honey lavender? Like crazy even now. That sounds delicious, but not delicious. The lavender. The honey. I think honey goes good. Makes everything better. Everything honey, better. Yeah. Absolutely. I also like sometimes in the morning when some people order the coffee, hot coffee, and they want cinnamon in it. Uh -huh. The smell and like the cinnamon. Cinnamon so strong. Coffee it's and good. cinnamon. It smells amazing. But uh, that's it, I think. But that's number one here. Like uh, quality over convenience. That's like. I don't care. I don't want to sell like a thousand coffees a day. I want to have like be nice and neat and have my people here. That's what people want. Yeah. People want to be in a place where people know them, where they feel comfortable and they can feel like it's not theirs, but it is. Like to yeah. them, it's their place. I mean, I see my reports every month from my POS, like loyalty. I have a lot of returning customers. That shows a lot. What type of loyalty system do you have? Or any kind? Square. Square? Yeah. And so does that notice what kind of credit cards they have? And just, it ties it to the customer? You just see the customer's I guess, name? I don't know. It just shows me every month. There's a report for the month. And it shows like you had, like, I don't know, that many thousand customers and that many returning. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's really gives nice. gives you a percentage. And I see like my returning customers are very... So that just keep going up? Yeah. That's good. So that's good. I mean, that's yeah. Sort of like I bet that makes you feel good too as does. a business owner. It does. One thing I don't like about what I do is I do one transaction with someone and I might never see them again. I usually do. But it's unlikely that I'll see them for multiple transactions. You might see the same person in you know, five days a week. And yeah. I, I like businesses like that because it allows more interaction with the customer. And when you have more volume, it gives you more opportunities to improve too, because the more you do it, the better you get at it, and the more feedback you're gonna get from yeah. your clients, from your customers. It's, it's amazing feeling of getting good feedback, nice feedback from customers. Like, it feels nice. Mm -hmm. it does a feel anyone nice. give you too much feedback? <laughs> no, I mean, I had a lot of nice compliments about uh -huh. me, the girls here. It does feel nice like, when you don't hear bad things about the place or complaints. The other thing I do here is that I think that's a Greek uh, reward system. I buy people coffees. Okay. People that come here like every day, I have to buy them. I don't know if you... It's smart. Yeah. And I don't do it. I just, uh, that's how we do it in Greece. Like, if somebody comes all the time, you have to buy him like once in a while. Yeah, makes Some sense. Some people are like, why? I was like, I don't know. That's people want to feel special. Yeah, I mean... If you buy me a coffee, because I come in all the time, especially if I'm with... I already did. Yeah, right? <laughs> First time here. <laughs> especially if I'm with friends then I'm going to feel special and my friends are going to feel like I'm special and it, it raises their status. Yeah. They feel better about themselves. That's and one thing I realized here, customers told me that they, they don't do it that much here in the States. No, not at all. To just... At a bar, you yes. have points and redeem points, okay. It's, it's, it's very they, impersonal. Yeah, I mean, no, I just buy them. Like, yeah. And they know it. They're like, oh, it's Some yours. days I don't know, I'm in a good mood, I feel more generous, I'm like, buy him the coffee, buy him the coffee. <laughs> At the end of the day, I was like, oh crap, I bought too many coffees today. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's good. I might not make money, but I'll make friends. <laughs> yeah. What time do you guys open? Seven, Monday to Friday, and okay. eight o'clock Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Until four. 
Is that, is, is that normal, hour-wise? I, when I first opened here, I was open seven to seven, but it was after late. three o'clock. Like, there were people out that just don't drink coffee. Yeah. I was thinking earlier, like, did people ever say, why don't you open at six or anything earlier? Than no, that? I never no. had that. Okay. It's okay, like seven, because I come here like six, fifteen, six, seven in the morning to open, there's nothing outside. It's still, okay. it's still too early. Seven is okay. Seven makes sense. And then eight on the weekends, people aren't waking up early anyway. Especially Sunday. Sunday morning's dead. Yeah. We get, if we get busy here, it's going to be like 10.30. <laughs> okay. Even in Greece, the same thing. Sundays, people sleep in. Like, uh, there's no point. Why get up at 7 o'clock if you can't sleep in Sunday? This was fun. Drinks were good. Really appreciate it. Yeah, that's it. That's it.